Um, anyway, Alexa says all I read about the UK, all I read about the UK these days is gloom and doom, even relatively to Europe or the US. Do you share that pessimism? Um, all right, so let's talk about the UK, and then in, in that context, that's a good time uh, to talk about Liz uh, Truss. I probably share that pessimism about the UK relative to the United States. I do think uh, of all the countries out there. Uh, the United States is actually uh, going to do better than, than most of these other countries. Now, it depends. If Liz is better than I expect, right, if Liz is, uh, is going to be on the, I, I'm going to, there's a spectrum of how good she could be. If she's better than expected, better than I expect at least, then the UK could do better than the US. Because one thing we know, the US is going to respond terribly to the coming uh, economic recession to the coming economic slow slowdown, the UK might respond more sanely uh, to it. So I think there's a lot of upside in the UK, given uh, some of Liz's rhetoric, and given that she's new. She's new to jobs. She's coming in an emergency situation. She could do good things. Uh, but I, I think the UK is better positioned than Europe in the sense that generally it has, uh, it has a more flexible economy, it has a more flexible labor force. It has better labor laws than does uh, most of Europe. Um, and again, Liz has the opportunity here. I'm calling her Liz now. Uh, Liz has an opportunity now to really make a big difference uh, in the UK. You know, uh, the left, uh, under Obama, uh, there used to be the saying, right? This is a saying that goes back a long, long time, well before Obama. But in Obama's presidency, they used the idea of never let a good crisis go to waste. Well, that, Liz Truss should embrace that. Never let a good crisis, Liz, go to waste. So, yes, go in there and start deregulating, which she has promised to do. One of the things, one of the better things about Liz Truss is she has gone in and said, I am going to do away with all the European Union regulations that hold back the uh, British economy, now that we're not part of the European Union, I can do that. I can do away with all those regulations, right? Before, and, and this is the great advantage of, of uh, a Brexit. Now, the UK is independent. It, it can decide to get rid of those. And one of my biggest criticisms of Johnson and my biggest criticism of Johnson in the context of Brexit was he kept all the regulations. The whole point of leaving the, the European Union, the whole point of leaving the European Union was to be able to get rid of the statism of the Europeans. And Johnson embraced it. He kept it all, including all the environmentalist regulations, all the labor regulations, all the other regulations on business that Truss has said whether she will do it or not is a different question, but she has said that she will start getting rid of those regulations, regulations that come from Europe that are un... Now, all of the regulations are necessary, but a reduction in regulation will help the UK economy dramatically and significantly. She's also talked about cutting taxes. Now, I'm not a huge fan of cutting taxes unless you also cut spending. So we will see if um, she is serious about cutting taxes and willing to cut spending and willing to deregulate. If she does, yeah, Alexis, I think, I think the, the, the UK economy is going to do better than the US economy. I'll add to that, that the UK is facing right now a, um, UK is facing right now a major uh, energy crisis. And uh, the Johnson administration, which, by the way, Liz Truss was a part of and a big supporter of, so is, that's why one has to be a little skeptical about her, maybe a lot skeptical about her. Um, uh, but the Johnson administration became a super green administration. By the way, the Johnson administration raised taxes. They had the highest, right now the UK has the highest taxes in UK history. Under a conservative government that controls 
the House of Commons. It controls Parliament. And yet they raise taxes. So Liz wants to reduce taxes. That's good. And, and she actually said something really, really good. In a, uh, she was pushed, I think it was the BBC or one of these TV shows. And she's pushed on like, you want to redistribute wealth from the, from the poor people to rich people. And, and she said, and she said, which is actually quite good. She said, we need to stop talking about redistribution of wealth. I am not going to be focused on who gets what and, and redistributing what. I'm focused on growth. I'm focused on growing the economy. And if we grow the economy, everybody will benefit, which is absolutely right. Now, she could have said a lot more. She could have made a more argument. You, you can't really expect that from politicians today. But anyway, she said that. And that, I thought that was quite impressive that she stood up. Uh, the, the TV host thought she had a nail. She had a big chart. Of, uh, of, of, and, and uh, Liz stuck to, I'm going to lower taxes, mm -hmm. uh, particularly on the wealthy. On, well, not wealthy, people making more than 50,000 pounds a year. So the focus was on economic growth, which is good, better than the alternatives. Uh, we have a president committed to negative economic growth, and, we, we, you know, and we've had almost no economic growth for a long, long time. So if Liz Trust turns out to be the better version of herself, if she challenges, if she channels, channels her hero, she says Margaret Thatcher is a, a hero. Uh, if she channels Margaret Thatcher, the UK is going to do better than the US because the US does not have a Ronald Reagan right now. And uh, it, she could use this crisis to really turn things around. There are other things that Liz Truss has talked about doing. Again, taking advantage of the current crisis is expanding drilling in the North Sea. Now that won't change. That won't change oil prices anytime soon, but it'll put the UK on much better grounding, and it will bring about a, a significant optimism about future prices of oil, which I think will really help energy markets in the UK. She's talked about. She's talked about approving fracking. Oh my God fracking in the UK, because it turns out, shockingly, is there's a bunch of natural gas in the UK, and it's Johnson who stopped the fracking. It's Johnson who prevented fracking. If they had started fracking two, three years ago, there would be no energy problem in the UK right now. So if Liz can start fracking, 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 yes. If Liz can start drilling in the North Sea, um, now, she's declared herself to be, and she will continue to declare herself to be, an environmentalist. Everybody believes that environmentalism is sacred and good and, and, and all of that. Um, but if she, in spite of that, actually has the courage to, to, to allow for fracking in the, in, in the UK and to drill in the North Sea and to expand oil and gas production, um, she has a chance to, to really make a real difference. And if, if the British people start seeing energy prices maybe go down just as prices in the rest of Europe are going up, if the UK starts seeing a path towards not energy independence, but less reliance on other, other countries. I mean, one of the problems the UK has is that France, which is, gets almost all its energy from nuclear, and there was talk about France exporting energy to the UK, well, France has a problem of maintenance of their nuclear power plants. They've underinvested in the nuclear power plants. So France is facing an energy crisis in spite of the fact that if all of their nuclear power plants were, were, were functioning, uh, they would be flush with energy. Over half of them are down for maintenance. Shocking. <laughs> uh, they've just underinvested so that if all of the nuclear power plants were functioning, they would be actually exporting energy to the UK. The UK is not going to get that, so they better provide their own. Now, again, this is an instant, but markets build in price and expectations. And if she's, she creates an expectation in the UK that, yes, there will be oil. Yes, we're pro-energy. Yes, we're, we're, oh, the other thing she's pro, at least she says she's pro. Again, we'll see the actions. She's pro-nuclear. She's talked about micro nuclear power plants, but also big nuclear power plants. She's pro both, which is also terrific. So she seems to be a very pro energy, 
prime minister in a way that I don't think the other candidate was. She seems to be pro-markets generally. She seems to be um, pro-cutting taxes, which I think and hope will also mean cutting spending. Um, and uh, she seems to be, the other thing she's pro, although we'll see if she actually manifests it, is pro-trade. Um, you know, this, she was the minister for trade for a while. She cut a deal with Japan. She's cut deals with other countries. Hopefully, she will go out there and really accelerate um, the idea of the UK being a trading nation and a trading island and this uh, free trade bastion. And if she can do that, the UK will recover a lot faster than the US because the US, one thing we know about the US is that both political parties are anti-trade. Both political tra parties are anti-free uh, um, markets. Both political parties are anti... I mean, the Republicans are bet much better on energy, but on every other thing, uh, Republicans are pretty pathetic. I've said this before. I actually think the Conservative Party in the UK is better than the Republican Party in the US to a large extent because they don't have religion. She claims to be religious, but she doesn't go to church. It's just not that important to anybody. Um, and because, also because, just listen to British politicians and listen to American politicians. The Brits are so much more intellectual. They're so much more thoughtful. They're so, you know, they yell at each other in Parliament and they get it out of their system. And then the rest of the time, they're actually engaged with issues and talking about it. And you might hate them. You might disagree with them. But they're talking about issues and they're talking about ideas and they're talking about what they want to do. And, and they're not just dealing in, I don't know, uh, slamming the other side, conspiracies, uh, and, and, and just political nonsense. At least that's my impression. So, uh, so Liz Truss, educated in Oxford, very well spoken. Yeah, I, I agree with Taisy. She, she, she sounds like a robot. She's kind of dull. I mean, I had my preferred candidate. Um, I had my preferred candidate, but she lost uh, in, uh, in, in the previous rounds of the presidency. She would be terrific. She was, a, uh, she was a, an immigrant from, well, she was actually, I think she was born in the UK, but went and was raised in Nigeria and came back so she, but to Nigerian parents. Kemi was terrific. I like Kemi a lot. I hope that uh, Liz Truss will give Kemi um, a, a significant position in, um, in the um, uh, UK government. I think it would be terrific to have, um, uh, to have a, a voice. Uh, you know, Kemi is unabashedly pro-capitalism in a way that not a single American politician that I know of is. So, um, yeah, and, and none of the religion, right? So completely poor markets, none of the religious baggage, and she's, uh, you know, she's from Nigeria. And, and that combination is just, um, uh, Kemi Badenoch is, um, is, is very, very good. So I'm hoping that she gets a senior position in, um, in the cabinet. I've not seen yet, I think there were some stories maybe in the Telegraph, of what the cabinet would look like, but it's behind a paywall, so I couldn't get to see it. Uh, so, so anyway, I'm positive. Um, you know, as I said, Kemi is, uh, uh, sorry, Liz is declared environmentalist. She was a, a big uh, pro-Johnson. So I don't know how much of that was politics and how much of that was sucking up to the boss. I, I don't know. Johnson was one of the worst prime ministers in British history and certainly one of the worst conservative prime ministers in British history. So he was terrible. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful she will be better. I'm hopeful that she will take real strides towards liberating the UK economy. Given they've done Brexit, there's real opportunity to lower tariffs, lower trade barriers. Given that they've done Brexit, there are real opportunities to reduce regulations and reduce taxes. Given that they've done Brexit, UK can really set an example for the rest of the world on how to liberalize an economy and get richer. So at a time when the world is heading towards a recession, at a time when we're facing stagflation, significant inflation and stagnation, I, I, you know, I think that somebody like uh, it reminds me a little bit about the same time as Thatcher came into office. Thatcher became prime minister 
at a time when the UK economy was in the pits, when inflation was on the rise, uh, where, uh, when uh, uh, the economy was not growing and hadn't grown for a long time. There was real pessimism in the air. People were depressed. And Thatcher turned the UK around completely and thoroughly. And uh, Liz Truss has an opportunity here, a real opportunity to make a big difference. So I'm excited by it. Uh, I hope she lives up to my excitement. She probably won't. She's a politician after all. Um, but let's hope, let's hope she does. And uh, if that will be the case, you know, we'll have a country, one country in the world heading in the right direction as everybody else is not. So Alexis... Um, I think there's reason to be doom and gloom in terms of inflation and, and recession, but the things that can be done to prevent that or to reduce the impact of that, I think you've got a prime minister that is at least willing to talk about doing those things. We don't have that in the U.S. So, you know, you, you're in somewhat, you can be a little optimistic. I am. I'll take off an hour at Hillwood. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution. Uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.